getting your ex back. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplify Myers, author, podcaster, and your uplifting life partner. Now, this is a conversation I've had with a few people recently. Also, I've seen a couple of people talk on this subject. And um, it's funny to hear people trying to share with people how to get back with their ex. Some people will teach you manipulative things to try to get back your partner. Some people will teach you manipulative uh, things in terms to try to burn your partner and make your partner regret breaking up with you, all these different games. I've had people even tell me that they go, well, that's not wasting my time. Of course it is. Uh, why would you put energy, remember that which you put out comes back to you. Why would you put your energy into trying to make someone else's life miserable. Do you understand in order to do that, your thought process, where you'd have to be hanging out mentally and the things you'd have to be trying to come up with? Do you understand that is a negative arena that you're staying in for yourself in order to try to get back at someone else? That's one of those things about drinking poison and wanting someone else to, to, to die. That's kind of the ideal. You're figuring out all these kind of things to burn someone else, to get back at someone else. And you're harming yourself in the process. So you're never going to hear me ever talk about trying to get revenge, to get back at your partner, to make your partner try to teach you how to make your partner regret losing you. Um, and that kind of brings us to the topic we're having today which is getting your ex back. I never, ever will be the person that's talking to you about getting your ex back. Why? There's a reason they're your ex. <laughs> ah, that's not saying, and, and don't misinterpret what I'm saying. Sometimes there are people that you need to get some stuff together or they need to get some stuff together. And down the line, you guys might be a great match. I'm not saying that's not possible. But I'm not going to tell you to set your life up preparing for that. That's the same idea of what I tell people about getting into relationships thinking that one day they will change. To me, that's the same conversation. You do not get in a relationship with a person unless you can accept what it is that is being presented to you at this point. Do not get in a relationship thinking, believing, with my influence, because I'm so good. <laughs> it's funny to hear people say that. Uh, because they believe that in the beginning until it doesn't work, and then all of a sudden they go, well, I thought I could change him, or I thought I could change her. Folks, that's not your job. Think about it. It's hard enough for you to get yourself to change. Why in the world would you put yourself in a position to be trying to change somebody else? But anyway, back to what we're talking about here. The reason I'm never going to talk to you about getting back to your ex is because, as you guys know, I never believe that is ever the issue. Your issues are not outside people. Your issues are always internal. This is about getting you together. And so whenever I'm talking to a person... It's going to always be about you. If you sit to me and try and tell me about what your partner did, okay, I may hear a little bit of that, but ultimately I'm going to cut it off and I'm going to come back to go, okay, now back to you. Why? Because, and you guys have heard me share this, this, this story. When I've had people that have asked me to help their friends or family member to get out of a relationship, and I would tell them that their partner or friend or family member is with the right person now. And I always get the same stare like, huh? Why would you say that? Or what makes you believe anything like that? And I said again, because you attract that which you put out. My thing is, a person is with a person that neglects them because of the fact of the way they feel about themselves. 
for some of you don't even get this in terms of, and I've shared this with a lot of ladies that, that will always tell me that they're looking for the guy, you know, it's the guy that you have to chase. And our society kind of teaches that too. It's like, it's the chase. I said, the reason is to chase, and the reason you're always trying to get the person that you don't, that, that, that doesn't want you, is because you haven't figured out your value yet, your worth, and that you are enough, and that the reality is, the person you're, in, you're with should be a person that is putting everything into you and everything into the relationship. If you gotta do all this chasing, Folks, that's tiring. Unless you unless you try to get into get into some kind of shape and you looking to run. <laughs> if so, enjoy yourself. But the reality is, folks, that gets tiring. Um, and some of you misinterpret this that the person that chases you is the person that really wants to be with you. Sometimes. That's the person who wants to get with you, but from a physical perspective, not because they want to necessarily be in a relationship with you. That's the misinterpretation. Because a lot of people that want to get in a relationship with you and you continue to make it hard for them to get with you, they stop or the chase is not as hard and you think it's because they lost interest or they're not interested or, or they just don't really truly want to be with you because they continue to, they would continue to chase you if they really wanted to be with you. It's nobody likes rejection. It's what I keep saying all the time when they talk about men are, men are uh, uh, hunters. I said, there are very few men at a club or somewhere, if they had to walk across the room to speak to you, would do it in a crowd or pretty much anywhere. Unless they're close enough with you that maybe they can say something. Or as a lady, you give him some kind of hint, you glance it at him, you stare, then he'll come over. But for the most part, and that's why one of those things that I've shared too, as far as uh, a lot of ladies are wondering why uh, guys don't come up to them. And I said, Look at your face. You're always frowning. And I know for some of you, it's because you believe all men are no good or you believe if you're friendly, every guy going to try to talk to you, get over yourself. Okay, everybody ain't after you. Uh, guys, the same thing, because I know for a lot of guys, that is the ego. <laughs> and ladies, you know that to be true, too. It, for, for some guys, it is true, though. If, if you speak to them, they think it's because you're interested. Um, that's the ego. But you know how to say no. You know how to say I'm not interested. But what I'm saying is your demeanor has to change. Because if you're always walking around frowning, looking evil, a guy that's actually interested in you and that you may be interested in also will not approach you because your face, your body, your energy, your vibes are telling him you're not open. And because most people do not want to get rejected, they're not going to go over and speak to you. And you're going to lose out on relationships thinking, well, if he was a real man, he'd come over here. No, folks, just, we got to get past these trying to label everyone because of things they will and will not do. By Like, like that example, he ain't a real man if he don't want to. That doesn't stop him from being a real man. Nobody wants to be rejected. Ladies, think about it. If you had to go approach guys... And some of you will. Some of you are brave enough to do that. Um, at least from the from the from the perspective, you'll give the hints, the winks, the the stares, or whatever. Which is how most relationships get started. No matter what people try to put out there, like guys or the women are the ones that that ignite, that usually ignite it. Um, but if you had to be the person to go approach men to get dates, how quickly would you do that, knowing the chances of him saying no? are pretty good. Think about it. You wouldn't go over there and do it. So why are you putting labels on men because of the fact they're not? No one enjoys getting rejected. Now, there are people that love the game, and that's the way they look at it. They love the game. They love the challenge. They're going to come after you just because they want to see if they can get you. Sometimes that's a good thing if they're really trying to get with you. 
Sometimes, in most cases, they're trying to get with you physically, not in a serious relationship with you. So that's kind of what I was getting to in this whole conversation here is don't think that just because a guy is coming after you, that means he wants to be in a relationship with you. Sometimes it's just the opposite. He just wants to go to bed with you. And the guy that really wants to be with you is tired of getting rejected because you're playing the games that the world has taught you to play. So this X conversation is why for me personally, and I think I started it off that way, there's a reason that they're your ex. Why would you want to get back with them? There's something there. I was having this conversation and someone was saying, um, I wanted to get back to where it used to be. No, you don't. Folks, think about it. No, you don't. You don't ever want your relationships to get back to where they were. That means obviously you didn't grow. You didn't learn. Where you were got you to where you are. Now, with that said, there are certain elements, there are certain things, certain um, maybe things they did or things that you did that you like those particular characteristics. Yes, of course you would take that. And that's the thing you learn in all relationships. Take the stuff that's good and valuable and use that for the future. And the things that wasn't good, you learn how to turn that around to help you see what you do want. In other words, if you have a person that's very rude and you don't like that, that was a good experience to learn what you want. Because I've said that before. When you tell people, what do you want? A lot of times people look at you and go, oh, I don't know. I don't really know what I want. But ask them, what is it that you don't want? And they can write a book. So for most people, this is where you need to start. What is it that you don't want to get clear on what you do want? And so, but anyway... With that said, that's why for me, I'm never going to talk to you about getting your ex back because everything I share, everything I teach is always about getting you together first. You will see, and you'll hear the stories. I know you guys have heard and Some of you can tell this story that when you took time for yourself, and folks, taking time to yourself doesn't mean just taking time off and you're not doing anything to grow because <laughs> that's just using, that's just wasted time. You can't say, well, I didn't date for a year and I took a year off from dating. But what did you learn? See, the key is if you're not using that time, which is the same thing during COVID-19, a lot of people didn't use this time to that they were in home to prepare themselves for to, to go towards their dreams and desires when this was a perfect opportunity. But anyway, I didn't get into that. But still, you guys understand where I'm going with that. If you're taking that time, if you're going to, to stay away from dating, what books are you reading? What seminars are you going to? What people are you surrounding yourself with in your life that have what you want, the relationships that you desire, and you're picking their brains and you're learning more about yourself and you're growing in different areas of yourself that maybe you feel like you could develop even better. That's you, you have to be doing that because guess what, folks? When you do that, you attract differently. Think about it. I've, you, you guys have heard me use the example, I don't smoke a drink. Do you think if I don't smoke a drink and I went to the bars... Chances are good you know the kind of ladies I'm going to end up attracting, the ones that are drinking. And that's not saying good, bad, right, or wrong. But that's who I'm going to attract. Why? Because that's the arena that I'm putting myself in. But if I say, well, Ron, you don't want anybody to drink, so why would, why are you in that arena? And I start to go in di different places. Guess what? I'm going to automatically be around a different group of people. See, that's why people think this is mystical when, when you hear people say you attract that which you put out and law of attraction and all that. People are thinking mystical stuff. But what it does is as you focus, you start to do things differently and therefore the attraction is because of the arenas that you start to put yourself in, which means you're going to attract 
a different surrounding, which means, guess what? You're going to attract different results and usually the results that you were looking for. Like if you want to hang around, like if you're saying you want to be wealthy, but you're only hanging around with people that have nothing and aren't striving to do nothing, where are you going to get the information and the drive and the push to get what you want? Does that make sense? But if you recognize that, and that's not saying the people that, that aren't moving in the direction you're going good, bad, right, and wrong. You guys know I'm not here to judge people. Run your journey. But if you want to do something differently and you say you want certain things, then you have to start surrounding yourself with different people that are thinking in that arena to get those results. So anyway, bottom line, get you together. And that's always going to be my conversation. Get you together first. And this one, you guys, have, I've used this before too. Most of you will recognize relationships are not as hard as you're making them out to be. When you start using your brain, your head, that's on your shoulders. And not allowing your pants to be your brains and do your thought process for you. You guys know what I'm talking about. Too many people let their sexual desires be all they think about. It's all that's under their mind. Um, it's just like when they're going to the clubs, that's all they're thinking about is who can they go to bed with. Folks, when you can learn how to get that thought process out of your brain, and I'm not saying sex is bad, folks. Do not be misinterpreting things that's being said. But when it's not your driving force, which unfortunately most people act like it's, 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 it's the world. It's like, <laughs> that is what drives us. Folks, when you learn how to have self-control and that is not your driving force, you will notice how your thought process in relationships will start to change automatically. Because now you're not making decisions based on these benefits that you think you're going to get. Which, as we know, for a lot of guys, it ain't all guys, but a lot of the benefits that you're getting are what? We know. It's because they're trying to get something at the end of the rainbow. And as some ladies know, you're using that to your advantage to get what you want. Um, you're using your sex as a way to get what you want. And if you learn how to stop doing that, and that means, yeah, ladies, what I'm saying, if you stop using sex to get what you want and start going to get what you want, and that's not saying, again, I'm going to do another video on that soon where I'm going to talk about this, this breadwinner and all that kind of stuff. Uh, those things are so uh, <laughs> messing up people big time along with the sexual thought process. Um, get clear. Is bottom line on you loving you where are you headed what do you want out of life then you will get to decide on if the person that is your ex should stay your ex because a lot of you have done this you've gone back and after you got with them you said yeah there was a reason that they were my ex and they should have stayed my ex yes because you didn't stop the time they became your ex and start to deal with the real issues and recognize why they're your ex and understand maybe there's a benefit to them being your ex and take the lessons from that relationship as we're saying and go learn other things and then you get to decide on if you even want them back and and again after you do that at the end and i've said this before when you do your work they do their work you may end up together somewhere down the road I'm not going to ever tell you to wait on a person. I'm not going to ever tell you you're going out here and make the changes for a person. That's never going to be my conversation. This is always going to be making the decisions to get you to be the best person you could possibly be. When you do that, then you will notice if this person is the right person for you and is headed in the right direction. And whether they should stay an ex or maybe they should even become an ex and as you guys know it ain't right it ain't wrong it is my opinion 
Run on over to ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, that's ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Check out all the things that I got going on. I do have an app that'll be coming out here um, probably within the next week or so. And uh, I'll let you guys give you the information on that. And it's going to be good because you'll be able to download it and on, on um, iPhones and Androids. And that'll make it real easy to be able to follow everything that I'm doing. Yeah, I'm excited about it. So anyway, as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you just should be doing something else. Folks, quit worrying about the X. Get you together first. And then we can decide on whether they deserve another chance or whether we're very fortunate that they are an X. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.